Doll E Mini, Doll E Mini, and it's an artificial intelligence tool that is taking social media by storm. So what is behind it? How exactly does it work? Joining us this morning is Professor Rao. And you know, Professor, I, I wasn't going to try to pronounce your entire name. Please forgive me uh, for, for not, uh, not being able to speak your native tongue and be able to, to, to uh, pronounce your name. But I'm going to call you Professor Rao. And more importantly, I'm going to call you an expert when it comes to artificial intelligence. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Gina. So help us understand, what exactly is Dolly? So suppose I ask you to think of an elephant um, in wearing a blue shirt, holding an umbrella, and bicycling. You had just thought about it. You actually thought of a picture in your mind. Uh -huh. It's just that you don't know how to print it out. Okay, some of us who are talented, um, you know, like conceptual artists knew how to do that by actually drawing what we just said. Um, what's happening right now is the pictures that you're seeing are produced by an AI program, uh, DALI Mini, which is actually a short, smaller version of DALI that OpenAI made. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they just take these text prompts Mm -hmm. um, you know, such as an avocado chair or, um, you know, an engineering professor or something, and then actually make pictures uh, that correspond to that, even if these pictures were never seen by the system. That's what has become quite interesting for people. And Dali Mini is available publicly, uh -huh. so people are playing with it. Okay, so it sounds like a lot of fun and, and could be really interesting, but can you talk about both the pros and cons of something like this? Yeah, so in terms of pros, this is great for conceptual artists. And first of all, I mean, we should just be impressed. We did not think that computers will be able to just take text prompts and generate basically photorealistic images. I should mention that DALI Mini that you're showing is mm -hmm. a smaller public program. The professional versions of them actually produce real photograph level images. It's a very you know, impressive development. And you know, conceptual artists can use this to come up with ideas while they are thinking of you know new kinds of uh, conceptual art to provide for sure. you know either a task and something. So there's just so many ways in which you can use this with humans using this as a tool to augment their own creativity. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So you also wanted to hear about what might be the downside. Well, the downside really is it's now going to be much easier to generate uh, what have been called deep fakes. That is, you know, files, the, the pictures that never existed that you just, you know, previously people had to spend time to Photoshop, let's say Obama uh, hugging or kissing uh, Trump. Uh, now you just have to tell Dali Mini, um, you know, Obama hugging um, Trump, and then you yeah. produce a picture. And you can imagine how, problematic this will yeah. become when the world is full of pictures that you whose uh, um, provenance, whose origin you are not sure of. And sure. that is going to be quite a big problem. So people um, with uh, bad motives could use it for, for bad reasons. And, you know, as, speaking of which, is a, another interesting story that has made headlines, you know, it's at Google, a Google engineer who was put on leave after claiming one of the company's are AI, artificial uh, intelligence systems, sentient or is able to feel or to think. Tell me what you think about that because we hear so many stories about AI. We, we've seen movies about AI taking over the world and, and we think about that as being something fantastic, something of, uh, uh, you know, subjects of movies. But how real is this? I mean, for those of us who are not in your world, <laughs> how close are we actually to that with AI? Yeah, so on the Google engineer story, it's actually about a language model, instead of generating pictures, he was playing with this uh, proprietary system that Google has called Lambda, which can have dialogue with you. So you can basically have the kind of dialogue we are having, except you type uh, your question, you, you are part of the conversation and mm. you know Lambda types its part. And this engineer decided that the conversation is so compelling that he decided that this program has the soul of a seven or eight year old person, okay, mm. a kid. And so of course, you know, that became quite a brouhaha. The, the interesting thing is not why, why people think that a program might be sentient. I mean, think about this, we look at a burnt toast 
and find Mother Mary's picture on it. We are great at anthropomorphizing <laughs> everything. And these programs are compelling enough in their outputs that we, mm. you know, there would be people like this guy who would think that these are sort of human-like and sure. sentient. And the worries that we have to consider uh, going forward is at least in the transition time, uh -huh. you know, before we all get used to this, more and more people are likely to take computer, pro, you know, talking to computer as if it is talking to sure. humans. And sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it could actually have huge yes. ethical issues. Sure. Uh, I guess so it just depends on on uh, on really the, the scenario. Professor Rao, this is a fascinating conversation. Uh, we could talk to you for another hour, <laughs> but thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning to talk about artificial intelligence, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.